Yep, thank you, sir. As captain of the cornball team, I am really into Spider-Man since, like, forever. I was impacted by how this nerdy, insecure teenager can make jokes in the face of adversity. This was his defense mechanism. And also how he learned that with great power comes great responsibility. In Star Wars, my brother and I could exhaust you with the names and backstories of random bounty hunters summoned by Darth Vader, only never to even be seen again in the films. <laughs> it might seem trivial to you, but the reason we know these things is because when you're passionate about something, you engage with it. You can sense a willingness to learn from it. So what are you passionate about? I learned to ask that question after I'd become technology center director at a local youth organization. The technology was 12 computers that were being used for social media instead of resources like coding or even homework help. We used to bribe the students with snacks as we tried to get them into our English learners program. But here's the thing, that English learners program didn't even have any real technology. And that word stood out to me, right? Like, I'm the technology center director. One who not only loves technology, but one who's also very literal. And while I'm being literal, we were using words like personalized learning, project-based learning. But neither the tech center nor many of the schools that I was working with at the time were actually offering any actual project-based learning. I don't even think they thought about what it meant. So, if I'm being real with you, even I didn't have the courage to offer programs based on youth passions yet. So I decided to focus on student ownership. I started forming student councils so that they could develop their own programs. And I wanted to challenge them, so much so that I handed them the budget for our English learners program and I asked them to help me hire for it. The students even conducted the interviews. And after they conducted the interviews, they even made the phone call to their pick, offering them the position. This was a tipping point. I didn't have to drag students to that English program anymore. This was their program. So now I could focus back on technology. We started developing small projects, renewable energy devices, small robotics that the students can own and take home. There's a bit of a, a deity mode feeling when you are the creator. The students and I continued to develop these kind of projects, and it was that little bit of ownership that turned this 12-student tech center into a 300-student, fully realized technology center. Now we were getting them there, but can we keep them there? And this was all going so well, until one of my students challenged me one day. She told me that she'd been attending because her friends like it, and she was cool with me. But she said there wasn't really there, anything there for her. She even told me that she doesn't like science. <laughs> Yo, who doesn't like science? <laughs> Please forgive me. From my perspective, there's science in everything that we do. But going from 12 students to 300, that made me greedy. I wasn't about to lose any student. So what I had to do was I had to figure out what she was passionate about and show her the science that was in it. So I went home and I worked on it. I set up these blueprints and formulas, and I had a secret plan on how to figure her out. <laughs> I'm gonna share this with you. I walked up to her the next day. I looked her right in the eyes. And I asked her this question. I said, what do you like? <laughs> it turns out that she liked poetry. And after discussing this with my boss, and by this point, I only referred to the students as my boss, much to the chagrin of my then employer. We decided that we'd develop a website where she could post her poetry. Some of her amazing friends quickly started jumping in. They started posting expose pieces on school lunches and mean teachers. <laughs> A short while after, I had some amazing students who were into videography, and they started using the website to post 
special effects videos that they had made. So they were a little underwhelmed. They were a little underwhelmed with the Game of Thrones dragons early in the seasons. They thought they could do better. Not bad. Another one of my stu students used that program to start her sports journalism career. And one of the students pictured here, he had a dream to work for an industry giant like Google. So he came in and he helped us develop that website into a mobile app. See, this, this was the holy grail. This is absolutely the secret formula. Passion plus ownership equals learning. This was my 1.21 gigawatt back to the future moment. <laughs> and even I hadn't realized how far we could go with it. One thing was for sure, though, we had outgrown that technology center. Ironically, while I'm challenging the youth to think outside the box, we were packing all of our steam toys into a box as we, the students and I, developed our own organization, and we called it Steambox, for the science, technology, engineering, the always undervalued arts and math programs designed for the students by the students. And we kept testing this out every time we got a chance. I had a friend who was a, she's an educator. She's an inspiration to me as an educator. And she brought a student to me because she was losing him. He was bored, he was disengaged, and she told me that he was ready to drop out of school. Even one of my most inspirational teachers was losing this student. But we've got a new formula now, right? All I got to do is figure out what this student's passionate about. So I asked him. He was passionate about Star Wars. <laughs> and Halo. And other sci-fi adventures re regarding space. Meanwhile, I've got another student. Her name's Fernanda. She's a wallflower, and it seemed like if she ever had to speak to anybody publicly, she would just die. Her passion was photography. See, we put these two students together along with another amazing team of students, and they came up with their own project. Their project would be to send this device to space to take a photo of the Earth. Okay, sure. Here's Shai Fernanda now. She dedicated the rest of her high school career coming to every single Steambox program. I almost cried when Steambox left the technology center and moved into a new building and joined a new school because Fernanda moved with us. And I mean this literally. Fernanda transferred schools so that she could stay with Steambox. She wasn't alone in her dedication, but it was particularly exciting watching her passion and development. So it didn't matter if their project reached space. It didn't matter if their gigantic robot had fully functioning death rays, a laser arm, kung fu grip. None of those things mattered. What mattered is that they were engaged and they were learning together. So we continued on this formula, turning everything I thought I knew as an educator right over onto its head and sinking any resources that I could find into their passions. And man, the students really pushed me, and they continued to push me, and they wanted to get the furthest away from education. So they asked me, hey, mister, can we make a car with artificial intelligence so it not only talks to us, but it has meaningful conversations with us? <laughs> okay, let's do it. <laughs> hey, mister, can we make a hoverboard like Marty McFly had in Back to the Future 2? Not like the ones that people were buying in stores that were lighting Christmas trees on fire and had wheels. <laughs> One that actually floats over the ground. And my answer to these students is, yes, let's do it. And they kept pushing. And they're thinking, there's no way he's going to say yes to this. Can we make an arcade at the school so we can play video games with all our friends? Hell yes! <laughs> Okay, mister, and now I'm cocky, right? Now I'm starting to believe in them until they asked me if they could make a time machine. You, a, a time machine? Yeah, you know, the one from Doctor Who, the TARDIS. 
And can we put a photo booth on the inside so we can take pictures with all of our homies? <laughs> all right. And while I'm confident in these students, I got to admit, when they told me they wanted to make the TARDIS, I've seen Doctor Who. It's this big, gigantic, beautiful police call box. I'm expecting a shoddy porta potty, but here's what they came up with. <laughs> I had a group of students who, they wanted to watch anime for a program. And we had so many great scientific breakthroughs happening. The last thing I wanted was an anime club, so I had a counter offer for them. When they said, hey, mister, can we watch anime for a program? I said, yeah, but how about we learn to make our own art and animation while we're at it? This same group, they had always wanted to go to Rhode Island Comic Con. Rhode Island Comic Con is kind of expensive, and we lack the resources, but what Steambox does not lack because of our students is solutions. So we all got jobs there. <laughs> this same group wanted to present their animations at Anime Boston. So we did. This same group, they wanted to learn from the best animation studio in the world, what they called Studio Ghibli. And now I'm super cocky. Now I'm like, hell yeah, let's do it. I'm going to get you train tickets. Are we going back to Boston? Like, what's up? And they're like, um, Studio Ghibli's in Tokyo. <laughs> I don't know about seeing the whole world just yet. But my students have begun taking an interest in worldwide solutions. Many of my youth are Latino, and in response to the recent hurricane season and ongoing disaster in Puerto Rico, my students have developed a method to aid students, not just for this disaster, but for future disasters as well. They've come up with a website matching real-time victim needs to worldwide supporters by just the click of a button. You don't have to worry about donations. You don't have to worry about shipping stuff. You click one button, and you're sending stuff directly to a classroom in need. The impact was global now, and we could feel it. But the thing that was always the most important to me was retention. Steambox come, these students come back to Steambox at every opportunity and join students from every race, gender identification, and culture. The word family is often used to describe the experience. But it's not all good. I mean, there's some numbers that I struggle with because I do want to catch them all like Pokemon. On the average day, <laughs> On the average Steambox day, what we found is that our students average less than two absences per quarter. While on the average day with no Steambox, the same students' absences double to more than four absences per quarter. What this is telling us, and numbers never lie, is that disengaged students, struggling students, they need a program like Steambox more not less. And also, another number that I had trouble with, two, two months. That's how much time it took. Steambox went into, we gambled all of my resources and went into Alvarez High School. A brand new principal who was a friend of mine, an amazing educator, she had a new gig at this school. And Fernanda joined us because she wanted to stay with Steambox at this new school. It wasn't a new school, I'm sorry, it was a struggling school. And in those two months, we found out that they were going to close the school. And this was devastating for all the parties that I mentioned and the entire community. And we weren't alone, but that two months was all the time that it took for Steambox to win the Samsung Solve for Tomorrow Challenge. This was a huge victory and a major part in keeping the school open and the big turnaround that followed. Graduation rates, I think, last year were up 10% alone. The school is still open. And the results kept coming. You remember that student who, she loved poetry. and She started this website. So she got a scholarship for her work in starting that website. So did our sports journalists and others. You remember that student who he had a dream to work for an industry giant like Google? He went on to work for well, Google. And he came back to Rhode Island to develop for uh, some organizations that are here and advising Governor Raimondo. And that group, that group that always wanted to travel to Japan, the group that had a dream 
of getting to Japan to not only learn from Studio Ghibli, but take part in that culture, Steambox made dreams come true as we not only learned from Studio Ghibli, but we toured all of Japan, all the way west to Hiroshima. Wow. Students come to Steambox because they know they're my boss. They know they own the program, so much so that active members even sit on my board. And they have an opportunity that way to fire me whenever the opportunity comes up. <laughs> they do throw it in my face. <laughs> they stay with Steambox because the programs follow their passions. Poetry, right? Sci-fi, anime, video games, food, whatever. The science, technology, engineering, arts, math, and other words that make them groan in the classrooms, it's assimilated and learned right through their own passions. So yeah. John and Fernanda and their amazing group, they sent this device to space. And it doesn't matter if it worked. And I have to be real with you, it did not. <laughs> we tested the GPS a whole lot, and the GPS had failed us. They'd lost their project. And Mr. Board with School, ready to drop out John, Fernanda and their group, I'm thinking that they're mourning, but they came right up to me and they said, if you take us two hours east from where we launched, we're going to find this device. They based this on weight, gravity, rotation of the earth, wind, speed, other factors that made my eyes bleed. <laughs> so why wasn't it making their eyes bleed? How is it that these students who tell you that they hate math and science, how is it that they could tell you exactly where this device is going to fall from the heavens and land somewhere in Connecticut? It's not my job to judge. They're my boss. I'm going to take them to that big red X that they put on their Goonie-style map of New England, even if it doesn't seem possible. <laughs> because learning is happening during the journey and not the destination. But wouldn't it be cool, though? Wouldn't it be cool, though, if they reached destination space? I mean, it's about five years later, and it was really cool to watch Elon Musk do it. Unfortunately, the only way to know if they ever retrieved their photo of the Earth, would be to find that device. But the students had failed. They failed to mention the 80-foot climb up a tree <laughs> once we got to their location in Connecticut and retrieved their photo of the Earth. Steambox is offering these students technology to follow their passions. Technology is offering these students more power than any of us have ever had. And with great power comes great responsibility. So I feel like I have a responsibility to share this with you. Again, the secret formula, passion, ownership, learning. So what will you do with it? Thank you. <laughs>